So today uh, I'm photographing uh, targeted insect samples uh, that we caught out around the farm, mostly in our uh, garden spaces. Um, and our pollinator uh, consultant, who is our retired beekeeper, uh, goes out with an aerial net um, and she has been doing wild bee observations for years and has a very good bead on what to look for and where to look for it. Um, and so because pollinators don't come into our passive traps very often, we have to go out and find them. So she's going out collecting those to add to our DNA library. There's a chance with some of these specimens that the DNA barcode is not going to get us a good ID of the specimen. So it may be that uh, that DNA in the database hasn't been collected to a good traditional ID yet. So uh, we're taking photographs from lots of different angles so we can do what's called digital morphology. So look at all the little pieces, uh, the wing venation and, and parts on the head and parts on the thorax and the abdomen um, in order to key out these species and get a better ID. Also, we're contributing these insects to a publicly available database. And so we want to connect as much data to the DNA as we can in this barcode of life database. Uh, so these become very valuable scientific specimens, not only for us, but for researchers around the world. In fact, we've had researchers from the Canary Islands request to use some of our insect species in their research uh, that we have uh, currently vouchered at the University of Guelph in, in their museum. So when we send the samples in, they take some DNA and run them, but then the rest of the sample gets what's called vouchered, and so it gets stored in their museum. In reality, uh, for these type of DNA specimens, it's in a freezer, um, and those are stored in deep freeze, and then um, researchers can request permission to utilize that material.